Welcome to the Fall River Mill Owners Association Mayoral Forum. We are broadcasting via the services of local cable access TV at Bristol Community College in Fall River, Mass. I'm your moderator tonight, and my name is Dave Wilder, president of ITV Global. In the past few months, ITV Global has been investigating how to help the bottom line of mill owners. And due to this familiarity with the mill owners' uh, unique situations, I have been asked by the Mill Owners Association to be the moderator tonight, and I'm honored to do so. Our guests today include the mayor of Fall River, Will Flanagan, and his opposition candidate, former city councilor, Kathleen Ann Viveris. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Thank you. The purpose for this televised discussion is to offer each candidate an opportunity to set forth ideas and plans for the re revitalization of our city's mills, and to answer questions about how do you see the city mills playing a key role in the economic transformation of our city? Each candidate will have an introduction to a topic, and that question will be answered by each of the candidates. And after each candidate answers the question, the one who started the questioning will have an opportunity for a brief response. Are there any questions? No. no. Good. Okay, well, the first question will go to first to um, Mrs. Viveris. And the question has two parts. How do you assess the past, present, and potential future economic value of Fall River's historic mills? And part B, could you briefly state your strategic plan on building the local economy and then add how the mills fit into that plan? I, I want to take just a moment to thank the Mill Owners Association for uh, scheduling today's forum. Uh, I think it's very important. And as we know, our city's mills are an extremely important part of not only our history, and are, are present, and I believe they need to be a key component in the future growth and development of Fall River. When we stop to think about how they contribute to the local economy, we have to understand that we really have two parts. The mills themselves are owned by business owners, and so we have to be very sensitive to the fact that as business owners, we need to do all we can to help them to do well in Fall River. And that includes providing the local services that might be necessary to help them address the needs that they have so they can be successful with their business operation. But the second side of it is with mill owners is that you're offering structures. Especially in an urban community, there's limited space. We don't have a lot of open area, especially in the center city. But what we have is a large amount of mill space. So we have to maximize that space, make it profitable for you as the mill owner, but also have it contribute to the local economy as well. Our goal is to determine the highest and best use for each mill structure. And we need your help to do that. And certainly the establishment of the Mill Owners Association is a good first step. Once we know what that highest and best use is, we can go forward. We understand that the mills, while they were typically used for manufacturing back in the day, uh, today's mills to be more successful need to be retrofitted and they can actually encompass a great many uses such as museum, office, they make absolutely fabulous office and residential spaces as well as provide a good opportunity for incubator space for new businesses. So they really cover the gamut and our uh, goal is to try to maximize that potential. It's a tremendous asset in Fall River and we need to capitalize on that asset so it benefits everyone. Thank you. Mayor Flanagan. Thank you. Uh, I also want to thank the Mill Owners Association uh, for sponsoring uh, today's forum. The Mill Owners Association uh, is a very strong group uh, within our community and they play a vital role uh, in the improving the quality of life of our city. Uh, for generations and probably since the beginning of our city's inception, Mills have played a vital role uh, for our city citizens. Uh, one time in our city, uh, textile manufacturing was booming, and it was probably one of the largest uh, trades of commerce uh, across our globe. Uh, and the mills and the owners of the mills uh, provided numerous amounts of jobs uh, to city citizens. Those times, unfortunately, have come and gone, and the mills today are historic structures within our city. And we have to do everything we can uh, at the community level to make sure that we preserve these mills and get the most economic use out of them as possible. 
If you look at the current stock of mills throughout our city, uh, they're being used uh, for, uh, for some really vital sources throughout the city of Fall River. They're used for office space. Uh, some of our mills are used for uh, hospital space. Uh, some are, are restaurants. Uh, and others are still used for manufacturing and uh, building things. So as we move forward, we need to make sure that we're doing everything we can to help the mill owners uh, of our city. And diversifying our economy is very important. And we need to make sure that as we move forward into the future of economic development, uh, that we're providing all of the assistance and materials and resources we possibly can to our mill owners so that these mills are being used, uh, that jobs are being created, uh, and they're being used in such a way that is uh, economically viable uh, for our city. Thank you. I think we'll go on to our, our second question, and Mayor Flanagan, this goes first to you. Uh, you were given a sample snapshot of typical expenses for a mill owner, where the utilities and taxes are estimated over 50% of the uh, expense costs. What role do you see the city government taking, if any, to assist mill owners in reducing these costs? And the second part of that question would be, what conditions would need to exist in order for the city to approve the raising of a mill building? Mm -hmm. So obviously you can see the, our concern as the mill owners. You know, how would you view either building up or when do we get to a point where we have to take a building down? I was able to look at a pie graph of mm -hmm. the cost associated uh, to the owners of the mills. And over 50% of the costs are associated with utilities being number one, mm -hmm. and taxes being number two. If you look at these mills, uh, in most circumstances, they're massive structures that uh, were architectural uh, models at the time uh, they were built. And it's important that public and private partnerships exist and to ensure that we're doing all we can to keep your costs down so that you are able to make your mills profitable. And Moving forward, I believe we can currently reuse our mills to keep energy costs down. We can do so by installing solar panels on mills. Uh, we can do so by seeing if wind turbines can be used at mill structures to help keep the energy costs down. And we can work with existing mill owners to do what we can to look for other ways of bringing alternative energy into the mill sources. But these mills are historic staples of our community and our administration is committed to historic preservation. And before a mill is raised, I believe you have to explore every possible use for it uh, to make sure that we're doing all that we can uh, to make sure that mill stays structured. Uh, so a raising of a mill is a last resort, and I believe all possible avenues have to be explored before you go to that last resort. Thank you. Mrs. Viveris. Certainly utility costs for any business are on the rise and they become a real challenge for us. Uh, I know that the mill owners are very conscious of opportunities to utilize their roof space for solar panels. Uh, I know there's a green roof technology that's now in play that could be very helpful. We know that windows often need to be replaced to provide greater insulation. Uh, to the extent that the local community can, can assist you in identifying grant funds and perhaps partner with you to identify those sources, then we need to do that. We need to give you those resources. I was very fortunate. I spent 10 years uh, managing a historic mill complex down in Plymouth, Massachusetts. So while I'm aware that the utility cost can be an extreme expense for mill owners, um, Typically speaking, you do have an opportunity to rent your space at, at amounts that are a little bit below market in comparison to brand new construction. And that would certainly be the goal, to make yourselves more attractive to potential occupants because of the fact that you can offer existing buildings structurally sound and hopefully uh, provide a slightly below market rental rate that would assist you in filling that space. Regarding uh, the second question with raising, it, it actually speaks to the first question as well. If adaptive reuse of a mill complex is going to be successful, it's very likely that you are going to have to demolish a certain portion of the structures that's on the site. Any good um, facility, whether it be for residential use, commercial use, even manufacturing and industrial use, is going to require on-site parking, we hope it's going to provide some green space and amenities to make the site attractive. 
And so you may need to raise buildings on the site to create space for those ancillary uses. Um, I actually leave it to the mill owners to decide which of those structures is least significant and which of those structures is less likely to have an adverse impact on both the mill's renovation and redevelopment as well as on the community at large. Okay, thank you. I think we'll go on to question three. And this question goes first to Mrs. Viveros. Talking about, uh, over the years, there have been various proposals and ideas to utilize the mills to improve our community. Some examples are free, the Fall River Energy uh, Program, live work communities, increase employment opportunities, et cetera. Do you support the use of mills as a building block for community improvement? And the second part of that question, if so, do you have any specific plans in mind when you think about using the mills for community improvement? Uh, absolutely. I think the mills are a great, again, resource and great asset to the city of Fall River. And as I mentioned earlier, they have a whole host of uses. They are no longer relegated just for manufacturing purposes. We're now seeing some very successful uh, retrofit projects that provide uh, wonderful living space, office space, I mentioned business incubator space, as well as that larger warehousing concept for storage and um, um, kind of back office utilization. So there's tremendous opportunities for that space. And I think that's important for us. Uh, three years ago, I was appointed to the city's master plan committee. And we felt so strongly about the renovation of the mills in Fall River that we actually made it a component part of that master plan. Now, unfortunately, that hasn't progressed and there's really been no progress made in that area. But I can tell you that the, the idea was to identify the structures on the site, to identify the zoning and the local constraints that might be in place and how we can help the mill owners to develop those mills to full potential within our community. Uh, we wanted to take a look at the availability of uh, funds that might be necessary for cleanup. We know many of our mills may be facing environmental challenges that will have to be overcome. And this is certainly an area where uh, public funding and uh, low interest loan programs might be available to assist the mills in getting them ready for full utilization. So they become part of the building block of, of Fall River when we are able to transform them, allow them to uh, take on the magnificence of the structures that they are and make them an integral part of not only the community but also our entire identity as a historic community. As we continue uh, to move forward uh, improving the quality of life for the citizens of Fall River, uh, the mills and the mill spaces are going to uh, continue to play a role in that improvement. And you mentioned the free initiative, and that was an initiative uh, that was brought forth by a prior administration, uh, but it's an initiative that our administration does support. And we do so because it's a good idea. And we were able to take solar and wind concepts from the free initiative and market them throughout the city of Fall River. And you see a number of our government buildings uh, which are going to high, e high energy efficient lighting and doing what we can to keep energy costs down within the city. So the free initiative, uh, we're able to take components from that and implement them to bring a uh, savings to the taxpayers of the city of Fall River. Uh, and live work communities are very important and they are components of mill spaces. And one of those examples uh, is the Commonwealth Landing. Uh, that's the former uh, Duro textile mill on our city's waterfront. And you saw three uh, business owners, in Tony Cadero, uh, Larry Kudo, and Alan McComber, uh, who purchased that building and are breathing new life into it. We were able to bring the New Life Church into that building. And so there are now church services in the, in the former uh, Quaker building. Uh, we were also able to uh, recruit uh, Jerry Remy, uh, former second baseman and sportscaster for Nesson, uh, to locate a restaurant inside of that mill. And we're hopefully also going to be able to get educational uh, facilities to also locate in that mill, as well as turn the third and fourth floors into uh, condos. So that is a perfect example of a live work community. Uh, but these ideas don't come about on their own. Uh, they come about because of the people, uh, especially people who are involved in the Mill Owners Association. And even before I was sworn in as mayor of the city of Fall River, 
I was meeting with the members of the MOA, getting their ideas, and seeing what I can do as an elected official to help them uh, continue to expand upon their business and make these mills uh, uh, have a new life once again in our city. So no one person is responsible for bringing out the change needed here in the city of Fall River. And as the mayor of this community, I will continue to work with the MOA to bring about the results that are needed. All right, thank you so much. Ms. Vivares, would you have any comment on that or should we go to the next Good. question? Good, all right. Next question goes to Mr. Mayor. Uh, you had mentioned education in your last answer. Uh, other thriving cities have seen the benefit of having extensive and a variety of educational resources to leapfrog into, new, to, into the new economy. Do you see this as a model for Fall River to go, to follow, and if so, how? I believe our mill structures uh, are very conducive uh, to the educational process. And there are so many uses uh, that can be brought into the mill spaces, and one of them is educational. And as you have various mill buildings that are looking to have space occupied within them, it's government's role to help to find them tenants. And whenever the Commonwealth is looking uh, to have one of its governmental offices in a mill building, or whenever somebody contacts you looking to uh, help lease space in the mill building, it's very important that we help direct them and navigate them to the various mill owners to see what type of space uh, may be most conducive to them. And one of the proposals I looked at was a for a university. Uh, it's something that has been talked at the city council level, and it's also been uh, information that has been sent directly uh, to the mayor's office. And it's a great concept. It's taking higher level educational courses and then bringing them into the various mill spaces within the city of Fall River. And I think that's a concept that's worth exploring because it's a concept where number one, there's always a need for higher education within the city of Fall River. And it's also a need to occupy uh, available space within the mills. So education is important. It's important to continue to have as many educational programs brought into the city, whether they're high educational programs or licensor type programs. And these mill spaces provide excellent opportunities for classroom space within, with inside the buildings. Thank you. Well, once again, I think when we look at our mills, uh, we have to consider that they really bring more to any venture uh, other than simple space. Um, there's a certain character, there's a certain uh, sense of stature that comes with it. And certainly um, education, which has oftentimes been rooted in our history, uh, would be a good fit for a mill structure. I see them being probably more effective if they were used for uh, specialty programs, um, enrichment programs, programs that might be designed for special purpose. If we were to develop a university that's uh, purpose was to be strictly in promoting theater and the arts, that would be extremely well suited to mill space. And hopefully that space could be offered at a more affordable uh, rate than what you might have to experience if you were building new. And again, what a great utilization of that space for an educational purpose. And I think what's also underlying all of this is we do need to figure out what are the educational needs within Fall River. Where are the areas where we can surpass other cities and towns in Massachusetts and provide that educational advantage that is so important when we look at the local economy? And to that extent, it's, the mills become part of a much larger economic development structure. I've long been a proponent of uh, a cluster strategy in economic development because what it does is it recognizes that if you're going to create and expand new industry in a community, you need not only a trained workforce, back to our educational uh, point, but you also need infrastructure and you need utilities and a whole host of items, not the least of which is the research and development, the science and technology that will support the industry in question. And certainly, our mill buildings and the educational opportunities they would present would be a great environment for us to expand those educational needs in, in partnership with economic growth and development within our community. Thank you. I'm going to take a, a quick break and, and comment a little bit. Um, I'm sure as we move forward to these other questions, the Mill Owners Association would be uh, open to any proposals or any specifics that you are planning on putting forth in your administration. 
So I would encourage you both, if you do have plans and you want to reveal them tonight for the first time, that would be wonderful. But as we move forward, we would like to see as much specificity as possible on these questions. I know it's a little hard with giving two minutes, but uh, <laughs> uh, please, uh, we'll give you a few more seconds if you have something specific you wanted to bring up. Um, being a local citizen, you hear a lot about the waterfront in Fall River, be it the, the natural gas facility, casinos, industrial parks, bioparks, the mill and waterfront uh, districts have been in the news. There's discussions, there's pros and cons. Um, do you see them coexisting? And if so, how would you lead the city in promoting initiatives promising economic and job growth? And part of that is, if there's only one or two initiatives that we can proceed with, how would you um, make the decision of who, what goes forward and how could the mills earn the top priority in your renovation plans? Specifically, uh, when you start to look at all of the other initiatives that we have ongoing, again, I, I view the mills as being more of a conduit and, and more of an opportunity for us to expand those uses rather than operate separate and apart from those uses. Uh, specifically, we'll talk about um, the life sciences and the biopark. There's going to be a great deal of need if uh, we are as successful as I know we will be in expanding life sciences within the community. There's always going to be a need for incubator space, uh, an area where a business can go in, a relatively uh, affordable space to be able to complete the research and development that might be necessary for their concept, to be able to bring a product through to commercialization. And that may be the time at which they have the financial resources to build their own building and take on a site and the capital improvements that might be associated with it. But I look at uh, the opportunity to use the mills for incubator space as being extremely important because again, it can be low cost space, uh, it can be built out much as a business may need it because we know that our mill owners are very anxious to accommodate their tenants, they're very comfortable. Um, as landlords as opposed to building owners and that's the kind of partnering that I think needs to be provided. Uh, again, I, th I think whatever the industry cluster is that we choose to pursue, we have a mill structure down on North Main Street in Fall River that has been retrofitted for medical offices. It's a beautiful structure. Uh, the space is very open, it's inviting, um, it actually has such a positive feel and when you consider you're welcoming people who may have medical problems, it's a tremendous environment and it shows what kind of retrofit can be put into place in order to have this happen. Uh, as far as specific plans, I'd like to speak more to the process of how this would happen. You need to be a part of the economic development within this community and to be continued. Uh, I, I love that tease. Uh, we'll give you 30 more seconds if you want to follow up on that. All right. Shall we go ahead? <laughs> All right. Uh, again, when we're looking at these, these businesses, I'm more about process. The first step is we need to inventory our existing mill space. We need to know what it is we have. Then we need to determine the highest and best use for all of our mill space. Which mills are better suited for which type of renovation and retrofit? And once we've identified that, then we need to figure out what the community needs to do, i.e. in terms of zoning, in terms of uh, financial resources, in terms of marketing, support services that are necessary to allow you to come to full potential. So it's, it's the process that's been outlined in the master plan. Uh, again, it was a good process that was developed as a result of the input of many of you as well as the community at large. So I'm all about getting that process in place, getting it moving, and together we will determine that highest and best use and how we can maximize your resources for the benefit of the whole community. Great, thank you. Uh, Mayor Flanagan will certainly give you as, as much time as, as Kathy had to pursue this answer. Thank you. Uh, as the mayor of the city, my primary responsibility is to help create jobs and sustain the jobs we already have here uh, for the city of Fall River. And it's creating jobs for people from GED level right up to PhD level. And one of the ways you create jobs is through making sure that business owners in the business community are able to see some predictability and some consi consistency throughout the decision making process. And we were able to do that with the Waterfront District Improvement Plan. That was a plan that was drafted by our administration 
that was supported unanimously by the City Council, which is going to help streamline zoning and permitting along our city's waterfront. And when that plan was drafted, it wasn't drafted in a vacuum. We brought numerous amounts of people to the table to solicit their input to making sure that what we were drafting would not be a hindrance to them in the final decision-making process. And we sat down with uh, mill owners mm -hmm. and we wanted to know directly from the mill owners, how would this district and plan help you? And if it's going to hurt you, what can we do to stop that hurt from occurring? And we're already seeing the results of this waterfront district improvement plan happening. Uh, jobs are being created, uh, construction is going on, and it's important that we do what we can to continue uh, to move this district improvement plan forward. But there are mills that exist that are not along the waterfront. So one of the questions that is asked, what do you do for them? Well, you continue to help them, and you continue to have them at the table, and do what you can to help find leads uh, for their occupancy. And when businesses or, or contracts come in, you have to make sure that you're letting them know that there's potential space in our mills for you to go to. And whenever clients come in or business owners come into our city and they're looking to make an investment in the community, we bring them to the various mills and show them the potential space that they have, whether it's for R&D, which is research and design, whether it's for uh, using it as manufacturing or distribution, or whether they're just looking for a, uh, a space to occupy their materials or goods with. So it's important that we continue to have a strong level of communication uh, with the mill owners. And I don't believe one segment of our industry should take uh, more of an emphasis on another. Uh, our responsibility is to diversify our economy as much as possible. And looking at our city's history, we can learn a lot going forward. Uh, when textile manufacturing and distribution was the uh, top segment of our economy, uh, people were doing well. Uh, they were buying houses, they were buying cars, they were putting food on their table. But when textile manufacturing either went south or overseas for cheaper labor, we saw thousands and thousands of individuals hit the unemployment line through no fault of their own. And my responsibility as the mayor of the city is to put the regulatory structures in place and to diversify our economy as much as possible uh, to continue to see job growth in our city and to sustain the businesses that we currently have here in the city of Fall River. Okay. Thank you, Mayor Flanagan. Mrs. Rivera, would you want to respond? Just following up on the issue of zoning, um, I'm not a big proponent of relaxing all zoning standards. I, I think that what it effectively does for any area is it just simply lowers the bar. It allows a developer to come in and do whatever they so choose without any oversight, and I don't think that's in the best interest of our community. What I do advocate for is streamlining the permitting process. And there are other communities that have been very successful at setting up a kind of one-stop permitting process, whereby if someone comes in that wants to renovate the mill structure, they should be able to sit down with all department representatives from, uh, from fire, from building inspections, from health and safety, uh, all municipal departments, and in one place understand exactly what needs to happen for that renovation of that space to be completed. We need to make it easy for folks. We need to set up that kind of one-stop <coughs> process because we know that time is money. And when you protract the permitting process, when you delay it, when you cause owners to have to go back and change something that they've done within a building because a new regulation has suddenly surfaced, that's a financial hardship. So I prefer to work on streamlining the permitting process, again, to help get that development done in a cost-effective manner. Thank you. I, I think it's fun that both of you either have prior experience in the strategic planning, uh, master planning for the city, or, or present responsibilities. One of the mill owners' concern is, how can you take these grandiose plans? And we have, there's been no shortage of good plans for Fall River, but how do you take those plans and make sure that the decade or two decades it takes to make some of those plans come to fruition? How does it actually happen? Uh, would you, so that next question would be, uh, is there a master plan? How would the continuity of that master plan be passed off to future administrations? And would you promote an enlarged planning department to help drive these future plans for the city? 
And this question goes to Mayor Flanagan first. Uh, there is a master plan uh, which exists uh, in the city of Fall River. And in fact, uh, former city councilor uh, Kathy Rivera's uh, played a integral role in developing that master plan. And, and I want to thank her uh, for the role that she played in it. And it's important that as an administration, uh, we do our best uh, to follow that plan as much as possible uh, to make sure that there's continuity uh, in the economic development and the planning and zoning uh, within the city of Fall River because administrations do change over time and department heads change over time and citizens move in and out of a community. Uh, but as I was getting to my point earlier, it's important for business owners to know that there's continuity within the city. They want to know if they're going to make a multi-million dollar investment within the community uh, that no matter who the mayor is or no matter who the department head is, they're going to be able to get their project done. And one of the concerns that I hear from business owners is they say, hey, mayor, you have a great city. Uh, you have a hardworking uh, workforce, but it takes too long for me to get my project done in your city. First, I got to go in front of the planning board. Then I have to go in front of the zoning board. And then somebody at that board objects to what I want to do. The next thing I know, I got to hire an attorney and go to court. And maybe five years later, uh, a judge may or may not allow me uh, to make an investment on a project. That type of uncertainty equals risk for business owners. And we got to continue to do what we can to eliminate that risk, make sure there's a continuity uh, for potential development in our city. And part of that goes to a planning department. Uh, right now, and for the longest time, uh, the city of Fall River has only had one planner within our city. And for a city of over 88,000 people, uh, that needs to be expanded. And uh, the planning department is something that our administration uh, will continue to examine uh, and change as we move forward into a second term. Mrs. Viveros? We did work very hard in 2009 to complete a master plan for the city of Fall River that was envisioned to go for 10 years. And that process was extremely helpful in that it brought people together from all areas throughout the community and had them develop a plan that we felt effectively captured the vision and the direction that we hoped for our city. I've mentioned the, the pieces relative to mill renovation and unfortunately that piece of the master plan has not been implemented. There's been uh, no progress made in that area and I think we've lost time in that area and believe that that needs to get re-energized. We had a specific opportunity there where understanding limited resources what the master plan committee did was we envisioned getting volunteer groups, community organizations. In your case, it might be an economic development group, the historic preservation group, um, the green futures group, various organizations within the community involved to start taking steps towards the completion of the master plan at no cost to the city of Fall River because we, we understood limited resources. However, that doesn't mean that the planning department doesn't need more resources. And I know in the city of Lowell, Massachusetts, uh, we look to them often. They're an excellent example of what's been done with mill renovation and community, community revitalization in general. Uh, they have actually expanded their planning staff because they have a nonprofit person actually located in the planner's department. And that person is funded through a nonprofit organization. And this is the kind of creative thinking that we have to engage in to expand those resources where government may not be able to provide those dollars for them. The other piece of the master plan that unfortunately has not moved forward um, in the last 20 months was also a complete revision of the zoning ordinances within the city of Fall River. And the committee had been meeting uh, while I was uh, completing my term on the city council because there again, we need to make sure that our zoning ordinances are clear and concise. They needed to be updated to reflect new technologies, new requirements for development. And there was a great deal of effort put into looking at other cities and towns throughout Massachusetts to see what kinds of zoning ordinances they had in place that could be utilized here in Fall River. And I would like to see that process undertaken yet again. And I'm told that there's a volunteer group that is, in fact, uh, venturing down that roadway as we speak. And I think the mayor would like some 
comments? Thank you. I, I strongly disagree with my opponent uh, when she uh, claims that the master plan is not being implemented. It is being implemented. And especially with surrounding the uh, mill occupancy and mill renovation. Take a number of mills throughout the city of Fall River and good things are happening with inside those mills right now. Take the Wampano Wampanoag Mill. Uh, it's being completed and it's going to be a residency for people 55 and over. That's a public-private partnership. Uh, take the Commonwealth Landing. Uh, that's a mill that's going to be a live workspace and that's through a public-private partnership. Uh, Primacare uh, continues to expand and make improvements with inside their building and that's the Durfee Mill Complex. Uh, take the mill on North Main Street. Uh, that's a refurbished mill uh, that is now office space within the city of Fall River. None of these projects happen by accident. They happen through the partnership of the uh, public-private sector. And our zoning code is somewhat archaic and it does have to be brought up uh, to modern age. But those things take time. You don't want to rush through the process and the first time you do it, you want to make sure it's the correct time uh, that you do it. Uh, so the master plan is being implemented. It's a plan that our administration uh, has been following and I believe it's important that we follow it because it's important to have continuity and to show potential business and existing business that there is a plan and a game book uh, that is being followed in development of our city. Well obviously this is a very important topic and we have the next question actually builds on this. Not only is you know is, do we have a healthy planning process but how does the Mill Owners Association fit in with everything else going on? The vibrancy of any city, as well as the su success of mill owners, is linked to effective infrastructure. For Fall River, this includes providing good highways, rail, bus and taxi services, waterfront transportation, airport access, and related services. What is your plan to oversee all of these ingredients to help promote new business? And, and one growth sector has been the high-tech sector. What ideas would you promote to create opportunities for new businesses and jobs in the mills? And this question goes to Mrs. Viveros. Uh, again, being an urban community, I see the mills as offering something that is really a premium in the center city, and that is space. And to that extent, we need to do all we can to take full advantage of your space to provide the opportunities for job generation, job creation, and you are part of the larger infrastructure within the city of Fall River. I have often felt that we are a bit disjointed in our economic development strategy, that we tend to look at transportation as a standalone component. We tend to look at whether it's rail or our deep water port or even our highway system as being transportation um, aspects of our economic development without understanding the integration that is so important in those. So I think we do need a more comprehensive approach. And to the extent that the mills offer space available, that needs to be part of the process. I would like to actually make sure that when a business comes to town to think about locating in Fall River, that all of our assets and all of our resources are made available to them, again, in a comprehensive fashion. And I think that the mills need to be an important part of that because you do offer that space that may not be readily available in terms of open space. We've talked about uh, new business, and again, I, I come back to the idea that we do need incubator space, but we also need ancillary services that uh, recommend, uh, that address the community's needs. Uh, we need to have a good opportunity for housing in our community. We need to have good opportunities for office space as well as manufacturing. And the mills become an integral part of that. But it does need to be part of a of plan. When I hear officials from the Massachusetts Department of Transportation tell me that the reconstruction of 79 is a transportation project, I want to say to them, no, it's not. And as the mayor, that's exactly what I will do. It needs to be considered as an economic development project. And all of these infrastructure amenities need to be considered in conjunction with one goal, creating jobs and expanding the Fall River economy. Thank you. Mayor Flanagan, you, I imagine you have some comments on this topic. Transportation is vitally important to economic growth and also enhancing education. And that's why our administration has been fighting so hard over the last year and a half to improve public transportation uh, within the city of Fall River. 
Currently, buses do not run after 6 p.m. and there's no Sunday service within the city. So if you rely upon bus service to get to and from work, uh, if you're working past 6 o'clock or have a job that uh, has work on Sundays, you're not going to be able to make your job. And if you don't make your job on time, you know what happens. The, your employer's more than likely going to let you go. Also, I've talked to so many citizens who rely upon transportation uh, to get to school. Uh, if you have a class that starts after 6 p.m. or if you have a weekend class, uh, you're not going to be able to attend that class. And if you don't attend your class, more likely than not, you're not going to get the lessons that are being taught in it and you're going to fail your subject. So our administration has been fighting hard to improve bus service within the city in order for those educational components as well as those economic development components. But we've also been fighting hard for South Coast Rail. I believe in order to continue to move our city forward, it's important that we continue to lobby our state and federal leaders to have rail access to the city of Fall River. It's just not an economic development uh, value to it, any transportation value to it. It's also an equity value. Other parts of the Commonwealth, as well as Rhode Island, have rail access, while the southeastern Massachusetts does not. Fall River, New Bedford, and Taunton do not have access to the rail. And that's simply just wrong. So we must continue to fight to make sure that we're lobbying our state and federal leaders to have rail access to our city. And there are also other transportation components that we've been fighting very hard for. And one of the, uh, of the people at the table has been Patricia Todd. Uh, she brought to us an opportunity to have high-speed ferry service come to the city of Fall River. And that's something that is very realistic, something that I do believe that will be occurring within our city over the next six months, and the city of Fall River will have an opportunity to have ferry service to New York, Block Island, Martha's Vineyard, Providence, Newport, all opportunities of access for our city. So what's that do in the long run? It makes Fall River another destination, another reason for people to come to our city, another reason for people to invest in our city, and improves the self-esteem and image of the city of Fall River. Thank you. <clears throat> Pardon me. Well, that follows, uh, you know, it's a good segue into our next question. With your administration and all these plans being made, the real test of that is, will Fall River become a destination city? Will people want to come to Fall River to work and for entertainment and such? So many argue that successful municipalities focus on promoting theirs as destination cities. What ideas and plans would you promote, and how would you tie them with the success of the mills? And if you wouldn't mind leading us off, Mr. Mayor. I do believe Fall River is a destination city, and we're going to continue to do what we can to continue to expand the destinations that we have in our city. Take the Narrow Center, uh, for example, uh, in Mr. Shapiro's building uh, over on Water Street. Narrow Center is in a music hall. It's an art museum. It currently has the Legos exhibit in it, and for those of you who haven't go, gone to look at the Legos exhibit, I surely encourage you to do because it's a great exhibit. Uh, but, you know, they have musicians, world-renowned musicians come there. People from all across the Northeast come to the Narrows to listen to music and for a night out. And that happens right inside of a mill building. And we've got to continue to do what we can to promote arts and entertainment within the city of Fall River and bring world-class cuisine into our city, making sure restaurants come in. And the mill space serves as great opportunities for restaurants to be located in them, for concert halls, for art galleries, all the things that people want to leave their home and go to. And this is not a new concept. We've seen it happen in Providence. We've seen it happen in Newport. We've seen it happen in Boston, New York. Pick any city you want to and they've done what they've been able to do to market their city what they currently have, but also expand it to bring in new uh, components to it. And go over to the Durfee Mills, where you have uh, the Millbilly artist. Artists 25 uh, to 35, typically, who do what they call urban art. Um, and that's happening currently right inside of one of our mills. So as the mayor of the city, I'm going to continue to work hard to promote the arts, culture, entertainment, and restaurant scene in our city because it creates jobs, it helps expand our economic tax base, and it brings people to the city of Fall River with disposable income, which are going to go 
to the existing restaurants and shops and spend money. So there are good things happening within the city of Fall River. Hardworking people are making those good things happen. And as the mayor of the city, I will continue to facilitate and expand upon and grow the arts and culture within our community. Thank you. Mrs. Viveris, your comments on how to promote Fall River? I think marketing of Fall River is extremely important and it's something that we just haven't done nearly enough of. And when I think of the word destination, I know oftentimes people think of it in terms of tourism, visitors coming to the community. But I want Fall River to be a destination for a whole host of uses. It would be an excellent destination for people who want quality living space. And there's nothing more uh, impressive than a mill that has been renovated for residential use. The volume, the sense of space, it's absolutely tremendous. We've seen it in New Bedford, we've seen it in Lowell. It should be a destination for quality living. We can make Fall River a destination for businesses. Why? Because we're going to provide great space, affordable space, and yet again, the mills are able to contribute to that. We want to make it a destination for its quality of life, and Fall River has that potential to do that. The mills are extremely important to that because when we look at structures like the Old Durfee High School, of which I was a graduate, it's now been converted to a courthouse. What a magnificent stately structure that building is. You can't come to the city of Fall River and not look at that building and be totally in awe with the historic character that that presents. And yet, it's a modern day functional use. And I see tremendous opportunity for that to happen. When we look at structures like St. Anne's Church, people come from far and wide. And again, the, the feeling inside that church for those that have religious beliefs, you can't help but feel a certain um, emotion when you're inside that structure. We need to do more of that. So we want to create Fall River as a destination location, but not just for visitors, for people who want to work here, people who want to live here, people who will appreciate the historic aspect of our community. And again, the mill structures and what they can become is integral to becoming part of the identity of Fall River and is very capable, you're all very capable of defining who we are as a people. Thank you. Well, we're coming to the, our last question for the, for the panel here, and this is more of a, a whiteboard, if you will. So this is your opportunity to describe any game-changing, any out-of-the-box, any kind of initiatives that your administration would pursue. So in your vision of this, of a new economy in Fall River, what do you absolutely believe has to happen to lift the city towards that future? And Mrs. Viveros, you get the first response. Specifically, we, we, I just touched on the issue of marketing, and I want to expand on that. We need to start marketing Fall River to prospective businesses if we're going to grow the local economy. What I'm proposing is the creation of a mayor's ambassador team. I want to get all the existing businesses within our community organized by whatever industry and or uh, characteristic they may have and get them ready to help us market the community of Fall River to people who are coming here to visit. Not only that, as mill owners, I mentioned when, I, when we started today that you actually have two roles to play. Not only do you have the structures that we can maximize use of, but you're also business owners. We need to get you involved in that ambassador's team. We need to get you involved as part of that marketing effort because you can provide good quality, affordable space to businesses that are looking to come to Fall River, businesses that are looking to create jobs within our community. So in terms of the job creation strategy, we do need to change the way we conduct our economic development business. I am proposing that we markedly change that strategy, that we get the existing businesses involved in that strategy. Why? Because government doesn't create jobs, businesses create jobs. And I know for a fact, um, I've worked with one of the business owners, CNE Industries, that's located in Pat Todd's mill. Because of that mill, that business owner was able to create jobs, to bring new money, new government contracts into Fall River. And had it not been for that affordable mill space, that may very well have not happened. I want to see a business like that grow. That's an industry cluster. 
There are other government contracts. There are other business opportunities, much like c &E Industries is doing, that would work very well in that mill space. And because you provide that space within our urban area, you can be an integral part of that. So what's the game changer? The game changer is changing the marketing in the city of Fall River. It's getting everybody on board, all hands on deck, promoting Fall River, convincing businesses that come to this city that we are a good place for them to locate, that they can be profitable in Fall River. And not second to that, we can provide them with a tremendous quality of life. And the mill structures are an integral part of achieving that. Thank you for this opportunity. In order to continue to improve upon the quality of life uh, for the citizens of Fall River, we need to do what we can to move our city forward. And economic development, job creation, and sustaining the jobs we currently have has been a top priority of our administration and will continue to be a top priority of our administration going forward. And as the mayor of the city, I have done everything that I possibly could do to diversify our economy, bringing in jobs for all levels of education and all levels of skill. And it's not easy. Looking at the current world we are living in, whether it's local, state, national, or global, there are difficulties going on all throughout our world, economic difficulties. And people, through no fault of their own, are out of a job and they're struggling to pay their bills and to make ends meet. My responsibility as mayor is to do everything I can to assist the private sector in sustaining the jobs they have and growing the companies that they have within our city, as well as attracting new companies to the city of Fall River. That's why it was so important to uh, bring apart streamlining and zoning, making sure that the regulatory process was predictable and not erratic and continue to promote our city as a business-friendly community. And the Mill Owners Association has had a seat at the table throughout that process, and they will continue to have a seat at the table as we move forward in moving the economic development of our city. And job creation is important. Improving public safety is important. Enhancing education is important. Historic preservation is important. But just as important as all those issues is also raising the self-esteem of our community, making sure people are proud to call Fall River their home, making sure that when the city is mentioned uh, in other uh, locations of the map, that it has a positive connotation to it. And the vast majority of people in the city are hardworking, honest people who care about the community, just like I do. And as the mayor of the city, I continue uh, looking forward to working right alongside with them uh, to improve the quality of life for the citizens of our community. And I want to thank the Mill Owners Association uh, for hosting tonight's forum, uh, and it has been a pleasure to be here. Well, we, thank, we certainly thank the candidates for their thoughtful participation, and we want to thank Keith Thibault, the Director of Television Services, Fall River Community Television, and Bristol Community College for their professional and very hospitable services for us and his team for making this transmission possible. It's been terrific. Uh, we will uh, reconvene and have a few closing comments. The mills and the mill owners have been a vital part of the Fall River economy for over a century. The Millers and Association was formed to tackle the challenges heading into the new century. The Fall River Mill Owners Association is a nonprofit organization to value the mills and to use them as a springboard for revitalization in the city. With this resource, we can drive 21st century prosperity. Currently, the mills house condos, apartments, new media, religious, education, arts and culture, manufacturing, and a host of other businesses. And it is very encouraging uh, for us to see both candidates are qualified and realize that improvements are needed moving forward. These improvements include that the, uh, that the mill owners have a vital role both in the planning and the economy of Fall River. Job creation, using the space for incubators for new businesses, preserving current jobs and a host of other activities will be used um, using mill resources. They also recognize that 
funding is very important, that government can't do it by itself. It's got to be a partnership of both public and private initiatives, and that the administration, whoever candidate wins the election, will pursue building those partnerships for the benefit of the city. It also is, is you know, noteworthy to see that the candidates recognize the failings of the past. That is, particularly in, in planning and carrying, for, uh, carrying those plans forward into the future. Both recognize uh, the importance of building the planning department as well as building a process that will take those plans into the next decade and the decades that follow. So with that, this concludes the televised broadcast on the subject of the future of the mills of Fall River and the plans and aspirations of our candidates have on the topic that as we head into the home stretch preceding the upcoming election. For the Fall River Mill Owners Association, I'm Dave Wilder saying thank you and good day.